Over on the Audio Post subreddit, K Silver Fox asks, Basically, we'll be recording a podcast via Skype as all the participants aren't in the same locale. However, rather than record the entire Skype call and post it, we'd like all participants to record their individual audio tracks and have an editor edit it all together for the best possible sound quality. My question is this, what hardware will I need to participate in a Skype call and record the local audio track individually at the same time? Note that there are three participants on my end. Well, that's a great idea, and it will certainly make the podcast for uh, sound much better at a much better quality. So, can you do that? Do you need any special hardware? Well, I have good news for you, K Silver Fox. You don't need anything special beyond what you already need to record a podcast. Maybe. First, let's take a look at how to do that with a Blue Yeti, since that's what Silver Fox says he has, and we'll assume he just has one. So I have my trusty Blue Yeti right here. It's all set up. It's attached to my computer. And now what we'll do is we'll make sure that it's an input device, both in my digital audio workstation, which is the fantastic Reaper DAW, and we'll make sure that we have it set in Skype. So here's how we do that. First, we'll make sure that Skype is set up to use the Yeti as its microphone. So from Skype, we go into File, I'm sorry, Skype, Preferences, audio video and we make sure that the Yeti microphone is selected as our input source. We can see the meter moving so that's a really good sign that the Yeti is listening to us. Let's bring the Yeti nice and close here. The next thing we'll do is we'll go over to our digital audio workstation and we'll arm a track and we'll make sure that the Yeti is set as the uh, as the preferred input device. So we do that in Reaper's preferences or whatever your digital audio workstation's preferences are. And right now I use my interface, but we'll make sure that we use different devices for both the input and the output. So we'll make sure that the Yeti is what we're using for our input. We click apply, we click OK, and we see the meter moving. If I tap on the Yeti, I can see that I'm getting signal. So here's what we do to check to make sure that this is working. We go over to Skype and it has a loopback service called the Skype test call service. And what that will do is that will listen to you and then echo back what the listener hears on the other side. We'll start to record in our digital audio workstation so we can see that WAV file is starting to appear. We'll make sure that the WAV file is recording and I can see it moving here as I speak into the Yeti. Welcome we'll to give Skype, Skype a call. Testing service. After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. So now what we do is we talk and we make sure that Skype is listening and we make sure that our WAV file is moving all at the same time. We need to talk until about Skype says 18 seconds. So now what we do is we talk and we make sure that Skype is listening and we make sure that our WAV file is moving. Great, so we have Skype so that it hears and we have Reaper so that it's recording. Let's just stop recording and make sure that that our digital audio workstation recorded our WAV file. Make sure that Skype is listening and we make sure that our WAV file is moving all at the same time. We need to talk until about Skype. Fantastic, so it heard both of those things. That means that we can now record and the other end can hear us on Skype. So both people listening to that. Now what you would do is you would actually listen to Skype on your headset. That way it didn't interfere with your mic, but I wanted to make sure that you guys would hear it. So that's the first way to do it. Now, what if you didn't have a USB mic? What would you do in that case? What if you did have uh, an interface, like I use a Personas Fire Studio here in my control room, and I want to be able to use that microphone instead of a USB microphone? So let's take away the, the Yeti. We'll disconnect the Yeti from the computer. And now I have my control room microphone here, which is a Shure SM58. Very standard, typical US, uh, XLR based microphone. So now we'll need to make sure that we switch Skype to be listening to, instead of the USB mic, we'll make sure it li is listening to the Fire Studio. So in Skype, we go over to Skype, Preferences, and we make sure that the Fire Studio is listening. I have the microphone plugged into input one on my interface, and now we'll make sure that we have our digital audio workstation. We'll have Reaper making sure it's listening to the Fire Studio. And we'll click apply. 
So now we see the meter moving and we're listening to the Shure microphone. So let's delete the, the track that we got from the Yeti. And now we'll start to record on the Shure microphone on my XLR mic. And we'll come over to Skype, make sure that Skype is set up to listen to the Personas. We see its meter moving. That's fantastic. We'll give the Skype test call service a, a ring. We'll listen to the lovely lady. Hello. Welcome to Skype call testing service. After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. She's such a nice lady. So now we're speaking into the shore and we'll need to adjust its preamp, but we can see that there's a wave file working there and we'll listen until 18 seconds. She's such a nice lady. So now we're speaking into the shore and we'll need to adjust its preamp, but we can see that there's a wave file working there and we'll listen until 18. Great, so now we've, got, we've established that Skype can listen to our interface also. Now here's the rub. And this is where K Silver Fox may need to end up spending a little money. The, the issue with Skype is it usually will only ever listen to input number one on an interface, which is what it's doing here. But if I plug my, inter, uh, my microphone into another input and I go over to Skype's preferences, I can see that the Fire Studio, while it's still plugged in, it's not listening to my microphone anymore. And that's where we'll have to get into possibly spending a little bit money, a little bit of money. Now, the reason I say this is because I am part of the, uh, the Apple OS X tribe. I don't know anything about Windows PCs, haven't used them for a long time. I believe there are some solutions that uh, will allow you to do what I'm about to show you in OS X that you can do for free in Windows. Uh, there's a service called, or an application called uh, Virtual Audio Cables, which I believe is open source, free to download, uh, that you can download and it will do what we're going to do with a pay version here. And I think there is a, another thing called Jack Audio or Jack's Audio. Uh, you can Google for that and I believe that will also create an aggregated device. I don't have much experience with it. I think it's going to do the same thing as what we're going to do here in OS X. What we're going to do in the OSX world is we're going to be using an application called Loopback. Loopback is unfortunately a for pay product. You may be able to use a, an open source application called Soundflower. I personally have not been able to make Soundflower work at all for anything. Uh, but Loopback will uh, aggregate all the different microphones on your interface and aggregate it into a one single output that we can then route over to Skype, which is what we're going to do because Silver Fox says he's got three people at his location. So he may have three different microphones. So let's see if we can give that a shot. In Loopback, the thing we're going to create is a virtual device. And we tell it what we want to add to the, uh, the virtual device and we're going to add our Fire Studio. And just to illustrate what it does here, is we're going to aggregate some different microphones onto it. So we'll put in our microphone number one and say microphone number eight. Uh, those are the microphones that I've got connected so, to this. So I could do any number of microphones. I could do uh, I could, microphones one, two, and three, one, two, and eight, but I've got different microphones that I need to add. So I'm going to add a few different microphones to it. And that's all there is to it. Now you've got your, your virtual device created. We'll close out of loopback. And now when we go over to Skype, instead of using the, the Fire Studio, we're going to use loopback as our listening device. So right now I've got my microphone plugged in input 8, which we saw didn't work before, but now we can see it. If I take the microphone out of input one and put it, I'm sorry, out of input eight and put it in input one, we still see that we get the meter moving. So that's fantastic. Just for the sake of argument, we'll put it back in number eight. We'll make sure our preamp is turned up on channel eight. And now let's make sure that we can do this. And I'll switch the microphone back and forth between my two inputs in Skype. Uh, while we're doing the loopback. So let's give our nice lady a call one more time. Hello, welcome to Skype call testing service. She's sweet. After the beep, 
please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. So now I've got the microphone plugged into number eight and we'll move it over to, we'll move it over to input number one to show that we can record with both at the same time. So now I've got the microphone plugged into number eight and we'll move it over. We'll move it over to input number one to show that we can record with both at the same time. Great. So now we've got it recording into, now we've got both of them going at the same time and we can demonstrate that we can do all of this now. So now each person on the remote side would set up their version of their workstation in the same way. They would create a, uh, they would add a DAW, they would plug their microphone so that it's recording in the DAW and on, uh, on Skype, whether they have one microphone or two, if they have more than one microphone, they can use loopback. And now they're all set. You can do your podcast remote where you can all interact with each other over the headphones and then save the, the, the pristine, the high quality files, mail them all together and assemble them in your digital audio workstation. So that's how you would run a podcast remotely over Skype, then stitch it all back together with high quality audio at the end. I hope this helps.